Um, what kind of dog? Uh, it's part dachshund, uh, part something else. It's fucking WrestleMania Saturday, and you're talking about what kind of dog it is? I like dogs. Brother, we got a big show to More talk about wrestling. here today. Yeah. I thought this show... Should I should I get the negative out of the way first? Because there is one negative. I, yeah. <laughs> ever knows, right. knows where this is going? Yeah. I don't want to sit here and talk about all the ways I was right about this show, including Mark, the attendance, including the fact that I said this show was going to be better than people expected, the fact that we talked about how it's going to be Cody, the fact that I predicted 55000 paid and it was. Let's talk about the fact, <sighs> let's talk about the fact that I had to hear these fuckers tell me, Brian, it's going to be way better two three-hour shows as opposed to one long-ass six-hour show. Well, I know most of you probably didn't watch the pre-show, but the pre-show started at uh, 6 Eastern, and uh, it's uh, 12, 13 a.m. Eastern right now, because this show was six fucking hours long. This show was the exact same length as all of those WrestleManias that were only one day. They did not make the show shorter, and obviously the biggest problem was in a fucking six... Here's the thing. There were no matches on the pre-show. How many, Mark? None, no, right? Zero no, matches yeah, on the pre-show. Yeah, there weren't any. So for two fucking hours, all they did was show fucking video packages for WrestleMania. For two full hours, video package, video package. Booker says shucky ducky. Video package, video package. Some bloke I never heard of says some shit about something. Video package, video package. So then they start the show. And how many fucking video packages do we have on this show? So I don't know if you guys know this or not. I'm sure you probably do. Boogs got hurt in the opening match. He went for a move, his knee buckled, and uh, he injured his quad, his patella. He's going to be out of action for quite a while. And uh, the match, they had to go home early. So uh, you know what happened when they had to go home early? Did they just continue on with whatever was next? No! They filled the time that the match was supposed to go with extra video packages. Because they had to make sure that we get everything in on time. And because a match ended early, we're going to show eight minutes of extra video packages. Then we'll be on time, and then we continue on. Well, video package, video package, video package, video package, video package, video package. And finally, at 8 o'clock Pacific, 11 Eastern, old Seamus, he tweets a picture of scissors. Why? Well, they had to cut the New Day's match off WrestleMania because they didn't have enough time. And, bro, by 8.20, I was so fucking furious at how fucking long the show was, and they showed nine minutes of video packages before Kevin Owens even came out. And I will say, the Kevin Owens-Steve Austin thing was so awesome that when the show was over, I was like, that was a great WrestleMania. But, bro, it took Steve Austin having his last fucking match after 19 years in Texas to change my mind because I was fucking pissed. I hate these. And someone today, you know what's you know, so ironic? You know what's so ironic? I don't know. No. Somebody there today texted me and they were like, bro, why do you hate these video packages so much? I explain to them because it's a fucking waste of time. It drags the goddamn fucking show out. Everybody watching this show, there ain't one new person watching this show that doesn't know these storylines. It just makes the show insufferably long. And you'll never guess, person has to be good friends with the New Day. Oh, how about that? Wonder what they're thinking about now. Hmm. Well, anyway. So, let's, uh, the rest of the show, a lot of good stuff on it. What'd you think, uh, Mark? I want. Vinny, how long has Brian been calling people blokes and bro? Oh, don't get into this again. Bro. we got to talk about WrestleMania. <laughs> it's been a couple of years, and I don't know it's how it started or why it's continuing. Because yeah, we yeah, have so just, many... He's over there. You know, I understand why you know, you're not here, UK. Vinny. I'm watching a oh, dog. get yeah. out of here, you idiot. <laughs> Go ahead, Vinny. Let's get started. I'll have more to say. Oh, will you? Yeah. Uh. We watched WWE WrestleMania. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Night 1, April 2nd, 2022. Yep. It opens with the Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs versus the Usos. Went like six minutes. Boogs blew out his knee. No. They went right to the finish and pinned Nakamura with E1D. Yeah, God, poor Boogs. Sucks. Sucks for Boogs, huh? Yeah. Sucks, well, it sucks for everyone. It sucks mostly oh, for him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, so thumbs down for the match. But more importantly, this guy's hurt. And apparently, like you say, it's going to be hurt real bad and out for a while. So terrible news all around. Not a good start for the day. Yeah. It's too bad because this Boogs was getting over. And uh, I can't help but notice that this is like the new... It's not a new thing, but, uh, you know, they have everyone in the Performance Center 
do all of these, you know, they have their little combine and then they have all of their lifts and they put the board up and who lifted the most weight and everything like that. And everyone's got to lift and lift and lift and lift, I guess, to make them, you know, stronger, more durable. That is is what lifting does. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, dude, there's so many people who get injured all the time. And here's Boogs. I mean, it wasn't even like he did anything. He had two guys on his shoulders and his knee just buckled and he collapsed. That was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that absolutely sucks, poor Boogs. Wrestling is always dangerous. It is dangerous. Everything is dangerous. And it's always some dumb thing that you wouldn't even think would hurt a guy. Seth Rollins thought his knee doing a sunset flip. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I thought the so, match was going along okay until uh, that happened. Up until then it was going along just fine. Well, yeah. it, was, I mean, it was so fast, it didn't have a chance to do anything but be okay. Uh, question for you, Brian. Someone who yeah. watches SmackDown regularly. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so Nakamura's entrance is he's got his buddy Boogs who plays the guitar. Boogs plays the guitar theme. They all rock out, mm-hmm. and then Pat McAfee marks out for it every single time. Yep. Yes. And and the first one one or two times I thought it was kind of funny, and now it feels like he's making it about himself. Is this fair to say as someone who watches this product every week? Like he's taking the heat off the stars and making it about him? Well, I don't know if I would say that, but McAfee is is very much a gimmick. Yes, he's a total gimmick. Yeah. And I think that early on, he was kind of minding his P's and Q's, as they say. And then, uh, you know, Vince took a liking to the guy, and now he's getting a little more comfortable. And so now he's like a big-time gimmick. Like, he's got that gimmick. He's got Pat McAfee turned up to... He's getting away with it, turning it up to 10. So, yes, that this is a usual thing for old McAfee. What do you think of this short match, Mark? I have no I have no real opinion on it. Right. I mean, it's sad. The guy got hurt. You it know? is sad. And, and then the match had to end, you know? Yeah. So, it is what it is. Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin. Now, I just noted I don't watch SmackDown, so I knew these guys were feuding. This feels like he's been feuding with these happy, shiny, happy people, or whatever they're called, for about five years. Yeah. But based on the video package, this entire program is about uh, stolen swords and jokes about dead moms. Do I have that correct? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, yeah. they uh, you know they didn't cool. do the dead mother thing until uh, SmackDown, and I watched SmackDown. And, uh, you know, by the time this segment aired on SmackDown this week, I was, like, mentally checked out. And right. so when they played the video of him saying, "You, what did he say about the sword? Something like, what do your sword you and lost, your mother you have lost, in common? Yeah, you yeah. lost both of them? I was like, <laughs> when the fuck did he say that horrible line? And then it turned out it was from SmackDown. I was appalled. <laughs> but no, that was the first time they ever mentioned that. It's, it's mostly yeah. been about the sword. Based on the video package, I can only assume this is one of the worst feuds of all time. No, that, that it's was not. awful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Pat that Mac- line was bad, but... The line is one of the worst lines of all time. Pat McAfee refers, refers to Drew as a Greek god built like man. <laughs> a Greek, a Greek god I wrote it down built like it, man. I wrote it down He's a man sure. built like a Greek god. Uh, I think that's what, that's what he meant to say. What it came out was, like, I wasn't sure where to put the hyphens, but it's almost, like, it's almost like he is a Greek god who is built like a man. Well, it would be like if Yoda said it. He's a Greek god built like man. Yes. yes. So the match is mostly boring. There's a point where Madcap jumps in the apron for you no reason. You always think these matches are boring, Vinny. You thought all these matches with Madcap were boring? Yes. I thought this turned into a really good match. The last, like, two minutes were very good. I bumped it up from a two-star match to a two-and-a-quarter-star match. Oh, but Vinny, you do the stars now, too? Eh, sometimes. Unaf- right, we do unofficial star right. readings. Unofficial. We're not official like Dave. I'd rather yeah. know, know to remind myself, did I like this match or not? Uh. And uh, it was fine. It felt like a raw match, but longer. Madcap jumps in the apron for no reason. Corbin yells at his own friend to jump down and then turns around. That starts Drew's comeback. Drew is still a freaky beast throwing these dudes around. He's a big, strong, Greek god built like man. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, he kicks out of end of days. He's Drew a does. narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> you popped Mark and Mark alone. <laughs> Uh, I don't even get it. I don't even, else. It's just stupid. <laughs> it was it's just delivery. Stupid, say, stupid thing to say. Drew uh, Drew becomes the first person to kick out of the end of days, according to Michael Cole. It's true. According to Mark. I said it. I yeah. said it. Okay. I, I said Mark it. knew that stat immediately. I, I don't know why I knew that. And I, I never certainly... thought about it, but I thought he's right. I don't remember I, anyone kicking out of that move. I read it on I, the internet. I certainly don't have a list of people who have kicked out of uh, Happy Corbin's finish on my computer. That's a new one. Yeah. Anyway, Drew is the future shock of the claim Morton wins. Last minute or two were very good. So afterwards, Drew gets his sword back. Yeah. Big sword. And Madcap's in the apron, and Drew doesn't like Madcap. And so Drew, so Drew McIntyre, on global television on Peacock, with 70-whatever thousand people watching. Mm-hmm. 53. 53 seven, whatever people 70. watching. Whatever. 70. The point is, enough, enough eyewitnesses. He attempts 
to murder Mad Cat Moss with a sword. Instead, he cuts the ropes in half. Yeah. We do 87 video packages, and we come back, the ropes are just back. <laughs> well. They had spare ropes. Of course they have spare they ropes. What, what kind of operation do you think this is? They probably do have spare ropes. They're yeah, a billion, they're of a billion they dollar do. company. they got to have spare ropes just of laying around. Who, who, who thought? I don't know. 100%. Who thought it'd be a good all idea to cut the ropes in half? Yes. WrestleMania, dude. Yeah. You go all out. Yeah. Don't half-ass that sword at WrestleMania. They're fighting over <laughs> a sword. Yeah. I'm going to remember that Try to Drew decapitate McIntyre, that guy. No one who was there is going to say, man, I remember that WrestleMania when Drew cut the ropes in half. And then hey, and you want to see my madcap impression? <laughs> Can't wait. Thanks. Okay. First, I get to get all jacked. What uh, uh, what do you call Corbin after this match? I don't know, Brian. What do you call Corbin after this match? Decappy Corbin. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Ray and Dominic Mysterio versus Miz and Logan Paul. <laughs> I right. thought it was the other Paul. I, it, oh, my that? God. The half this fucking match, I'd explain to Mark which Paul this was. I don't fucking know. I, don't, I can't tell them apart. Listen. Aren't they twins, Brian? No, they're not twins. They're two years apart. <laughs> yeah, you told me. Yeah, it's true. Logan Paul was awesome. The twins are me and you tonight with <laughs> matching shitty haircuts. No offense. <sighs> well, I'm going to take offense. Thanks. Lo Logan Paul was better than several guys in this show, actually. Oh, he was way better than Miz. Including his own partner. Like, oh, it's my clear. God. Brian really hates Miz. I don't well, hate the guy, but I think he's a horrible wrestler. Well, he was doesn't well, mean I, I hate him. Well, if you I told mean, me you hate him as a wrestler, if you told me that Miz was intentionally sabotaging himself and half-assing it and putting on a poor performance to make Logan Paul look better and explain the turn at the end, I would believe you. Listen, like Miz is bad tonight. Here's the thing, everybody, and let's all be honest here, okay? I don't oh. care how much you like the Miz or whatever. Mark, you're married. Yeah, yeah. I'm married. Vinny's married. We are, yeah. Be absolutely 100% honest. Sure. If you showed your significant other this match, uh -huh. and you said three of these guys are regular WWE wrestlers who have been doing this for years, one of them is in his first match ever. Honestly. Who the fuck out of all of our significant others, is going to pick Logan Paul. They're all going to pick The Miz. They ain't picking fucking Rey Mysterio. No. Dominic's doing all sorts of springboards and shit like that. They ain't picking him. So it's either it's either Logan Paul mm -hmm. or it's slow as shit wrestling underwater Miz. And they're all going to pick The Miz. Logan's right? Logan's bigger, has a better physique, yes. has more in-ring personality, more athletic. he's a better athlete. <laughs> It worked better. There was nothing that Miz did better than Logan Paul. Nothing. Match. Not one Zero. thing in his match. You can't even say, like, his pacing or no. his poise. No. Dude, None of that. He, when, when Logan did the three amigos as slowly as possible and then took his time going to the top rope and doing the Eddie Guerrero shoulder shimmy, I was like, this is this guy's a pro. This guy's a natural. Miz has never had that much poise or, 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 or uh, uh, crowd control in his life. So, yes. No, well, everyone, they're, they're not picking Dom. No, they're not picking Dom as the guy who's never had a match before. Are you kidding me? No. Well, my my wife watches wrestling with me, so... She does? Yeah. Can you believe it? No. Yes. I, I honestly can't. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, she was like, I can't oh, imagine I'm anyone miss... watching wrestling with you, to be honest. <laughs> well, Much did, less a wife. You did it tonight, and you're going to do I it again I, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I know. What was I thinking? <laughs> so the match is very good, mainly because of Logan Paul yeah. and despite The Miz. Yes. Uh, the Mysterios are running wild. They go for, like, they, they, they have Logan set up for a double six one nine spot, and... I may go back and watch this because I'm almost sure this is what happened. Like, Miz was supposed to break up the finish, but he went to break up the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because he, was he, he apron, jumps yeah. the apron and then just jumps right back yeah, down. Yeah, he runs away. He runs off out of camera range. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Brian was yelling. I don't at remember me. Logan Paul missing any spots in this uh, match. I don't remember one. him being out of position or lost. Brian kept yelling at me. See, see, that's yeah, the Miz is bad. To point see, it out to you. See, see, because you're blind. I just don't care. He was that watching much. this match without his glasses on. That was part of the problem. Well, I was not. I was watching it with my glasses on. I just don't give a fucking shit about it. I don't well, care. That's okay. Just don't argue it. <laughs> well, I've got nothing better to do for four fucking hours than sit that's on true. your couch and argue with you. No one held a gun to your head and say, come to the house. <laughs> well, I was going to watch it by myself. Yeah, I was, it was, I mean, we had know. fun. I haven't been out of the goddamn house in two well, fucking years. There's, so. that, there's that. Might as well come so, over. So the Mysterios are running wild. They had a pair of splashes on Logan. 
But Miz hits the ring, slams the Mysterios onto each other, and then pins Ray with a skull crushing finale. It was a very good tag team match. Yeah. And then afterwards, and they actually had a great camera angle this on replay. Miz is celebrating with Logan Paul, and he's holding up his hand. They're posting together. But he can see Logan's getting a bigger reaction, and a jealous sneer comes over his face, and he lays out Logan with the skull-crushing finale. I was so flabbergasted. Listen, we saw in the opening match, they're, per- they're perfectly capable of calling an audible. Like, they, the, the referee has a little gimmick on his thing, and they talk to his ear. Bro, this Logan Paul was the best working fucking heel by miles. And they still had to go with their plan of Miz is going to turn on him and then Logan's going to like be the baby face in this. Talk about completely, utterly, absolutely clueless. They could have easily called the audible, don't do the angle, just let's go backstage, Miz got the win. You know, they can do a tag match or whatever and then Logan can turn on Miz or whatever. I don't know what you're going to do, but fucking, I was just aghast after seeing what a great heel this Logan Paul was and then... Gotta shoot the angle to babyface this kid. So, Brian, he's not the one that boxes? He's had one boxing match. But he's not the boxer. No, that's his brother. <laughs> Great. Fucking little <laughs> troll. Gotta have like nine burners on Reddit, don't you? <sighs> I don't know what Reddit is. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Go nice ahead. Day. Stephanie comes out to introduce Gable Steveson to the crowd, and yes, they are going to let him use the name Gable Steveson. Well, for now. Is- which well, is one of the well, I mean, so they can always change it later down the road, I guess. Yeah. But if they do, it's honestly one of the biggest news items coming out of the show. Dude, she calls him out and she introduces his name, and they have his name up on that big screen. And this guy came out and listen. Somebody here in the the Twitch chat was uh, angry, and they said that Dominic had the uh, charisma of a mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line, whether I agree with it or not. That's a great line. <laughs> I'm sure this Gable Stevenson's a great guy. But, bro, he was a mailbox out there. Bro. He came out. But a terrifying mailbox. He went like this, and he walked away. Didn't he give him one of these? <sighs> Didn't he do this? There, there was some fist pumping involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah one of these. I mean, I, your, your point stands, Brian. He hasn't been to the, to the factory yet. He's a, re- he's a wrestler, not a cheerleader. He hasn't, you know, yeah, he hasn't gotten one his lessons. As far know, as I know. Give him, give Can't him you remember time. the very first time we ever saw Kurt Angle on television? But he had well, had lessons. He Dick. had been in Memphis for a few months. <laughs> for a few months? Yeah, yeah. He, but he They've had been it. training this... Gable Stevenson for months. All right. Have they? Yes, he's been Where? training the entire time, ever since they announced he's that he was signing. In, he's still in college, doing college things. No, he's, he's just, done. He retired. He just run, well, he, oh, he just won a college thing, is what I'm saying. Uh, I know, but he's on his way. So has he been training for months? Because he's been training for both. He's got to get his diploma. He's got personal trainers training him to be a wrestler. Oh, well, they haven't yeah. trained him yet on like the whole charisma. And, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, Brian, Monday morning yeah. is stand next to Stephanie in Poe's class. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we had a, a commercial for Young Rock, which was, which was really like a long clip. I feel like I've seen it an was, episode yeah. of the show now. Yeah. All right. Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. Holy shit! <laughs> what a great fucking match this was. From the get-go, uh, Becky comes out with a big fancy truck or whatever. Bianca comes out with the Texas Southern marching band, a whole marching band with this one woman coming down to the ring. And as much as we mock these video packages, they made it abundantly clear that at SummerSlam, Bianca had the rug yanked out from under her. She's pinned in 20 seconds or whatever it was. And so the bell rings here, and they tease doing the exact same thing again. A couple of times, actually. A couple of teases. And so they, they started. Usually a match starts here and then builds, 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 builds. This one started here off the screen, came down to like the top of the screen level for a while, and went back off the screen again. So we started with, we started with a bunch of near falls and frantic finishes. We had a lot of grappling, a lot of submission holds in the middle for a while. We had big moves like the Chicago Skyline, a middle rope 450 splash, a molly go round. They're fighting like hell, going for finishers and blocking finishers for, I don't know how long it went, close to a half hour, I think, and it just just super intense all the way through. Becky's trying to flee. She knows she's beat. She's trying to take the countout loss and keep her title. She hits a manhandle slam on the stairs. They tease a countout win for Becky, and Bianca barely crawls into the ring. The place is just going crazy. 50-whatever thousand people are going nuts, and... Bianca made it into the ring, but she is still dead weight. 
and Becky's trying to lift up the dead weight to slam her. But as soon as she gets to her feet, it turns out Bianca was playing possum. She flips off, uh, flips off the ropes to avoid the manhandle slam, grabs her, hits the kiss of death, and wins. The place just goes haywire. Bianca's going to have the best match at WrestleMania two years in a row, which is, is quite a defeat. This was awesome. This was unbelievable. This made the whole thing worth it by itself. And when it was done, I was like, I can't believe I saw this and Briscoes versus FTR in like almost exactly 24 hours. Nah, I haven't seen that one yet. I didn't spoil anything for you, except I, I recommend it. I hear it was awesome. Oh, God, it was awesome. There was but, a little bit of sloppiness in this match. Okay. All right. I know people don't want to hear it, but, dude, Bianca got kicked right in the face by that Molly go with a heel, mm. and there were a couple of others as well, but they worked their asses off, and they were determined to have a great match. And, you know, I know Becky's got the heel character and everything like that, but I think it's been abundantly clear since the very first day that they had that first match at SummerSlam and poor Bianca got beaten in 24 seconds, that Becky really likes Bianca and was really excited to be able to put her over at WrestleMania here. And uh, and boy, did she ever put her over. And uh, I do expect uh, apologies from everybody for the last three months telling me that they were sure that Bianca was going to fail and lose at WrestleMania. Because, boy, did I have to hear that over and over again. But they did exactly, exactly what they should have done. This played off literally from the day SummerSlam happened. Everything that they have done has been building to Bianca getting this win. From Soul Survivor to Royal Rumble. I mean, it was patently obvious it was going to end like this. But fuck, did I have to hear how they were going to fuck this up. And guess what? They didn't! They did exactly what they should have done. They delivered... They worked their asses off. It was really good. Was was this the match that you couldn't figure out how to order pizza during? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I found out, Vinny, that yeah, Brian Apple doesn't really up. understand what pizza is. Or do I really does. need to tell this story, Mark? <laughs> I said, "Hey, Mark, what do you want for uh, what do you want for to to get?" He for bought food? me dinner. Yeah. I go, what do you want? He Isn't goes, that nice? I, I said, I can get Very pizza, nice. Uber Eats, whatever. He goes, pizza's fine. Yeah. I said, okay. Pizza's fine. So I, I load up Uber Eats, and I yeah. was like, uh, okay, I'll get uh, Papa John's. He goes, Papa John's? Yeah, what the fuck? He said, no, Papa John's. That's garbage. What else is there? I fucking read off a dozen pizza places. They're he doesn't like bad. any of them. They're all bad. They all suck, he says. Yep. Mark is from New York. We're literally out, out of places to get pizza. Like, <laughs> we've gone through every single one. Finally, he goes... All right, just uh, just Pizza Hut. Yeah, just get the... I'm I like, said, fine, let's, I'll get Pizza Hut. I said, let's just out I pizza said, what do you want in it? You want uh, pepperoni, sausage? He goes, pepperoni, sausage? <laughs> I just want cheese. Yeah, I just said uh, cheese. I sorry. said, just wait a second. Just cheese. That's fine. You only want cheese on your fucking pizza, yeah, but you're a pizza snob I where you won't eat at any other fucking pizza place. I think you're overreacting. So I got a goddamn personal pizza from Mark with only fucking... Not, he didn't it's even want cheese. extra cheese. No, that's too much no, cheese. No, not extra cheese. Just pizza uh, with cheese. Well, I don't want to get diarrhea. So I got your fucking pizza with cheese, and I got myself a man's pizza. <laughs> it had sausage Pepperoni on and it, sausage and extra idiot. cheese. <laughs> Shut the fuck I up. I fucking ate the whole pizza, did I not? Pizza. With the exception this of one slice. This motherfucker ate an entire pizza in front of me. Yeah. Just sat there just like a sloth. Just I was hungry. He had the pizza box sitting on now his I chest. Am. And he's just you don't like, even want to know what I ate earlier today. Uh, uh, Dude. Just shoving pizza. And he's like, I'm going to eat this whole pizza. I woke like up. Like he's trying to fucking impress me. I went to the ranch burger. I had a burger. I had a large fry. Then we went and got donuts. Then we went and got a big cat, which Mark ridiculed. <laughs> That's another story, by the way. Then I ate a whole fucking pizza A regular myself. Kit Kat is better than a big cat. That's no, it. That's what you, I said. You know what this guy does? Listen to this gimmick. I said I said I had a big cat today. <laughs> Why is it he goes, a gimmick? He goes, what? what? No, let me tell the story. Why can't we talk like he normal goes, people? He goes, what's a big cat? <laughs> I said, well, it's a Kit Kat that's blown up real big. He goes, oh, why would you want to eat that? Yeah, fuck And I it. said, it's good. And so I'm going on for a while. And then finally he goes, I've had a big cat. <laughs> You just fucking said yeah. you didn't even know what a big cat was. Now you had a big cat in your life? This is my Fuck my off. entire relationship with you is just me getting on your nerves. I don't fucking know. are getting on my nerves right now. I'm sweating. <laughs> Go on, Vinny. What's next? Seth Rollins versus a mystery opponent. Oh, do we need to talk about who Mark thought the mystery guy was going to be? Oh, please do. Yeah, he goes, I had, the few, I had a few. Can I talk about it? Yeah, go for it. I said Undertaker because he said last night he put the hat and the coat on. He said, never say never. And I was like, here he goes. Because here's the thing. Fucking Brian and Uncle Dave and everybody else, 
They all got to spoil Cody Rhodes. This is what I've been talking about. Fucking Brian and everybody. Like, I want to watch a show and I want to be surprised by the troll. show. But fucking Brian and Uncle Dave got to go and be like, well, it's going to be Cody Rhodes. He's coming in. This and then it spoils the whole thing for us. So I'm like, why would they actually send fucking Cody Rhodes out there when we all know it's going to be Cody Rhodes? Send somebody else out there. Send the Undertaker out there. Choke slam, tombstone, and we're out. And it's fun. Whatever. And I was like, maybe they'll send the Fiend. Who knows? That sounds stupid the enough. The Fiend. <laughs> You know, something dumb. Huh. Because you and Uncle Dave are always spoiling everything. Well, you know what? They uh, they darken the arena, and those fans... I said it was going to go bong. They bong. started chanting Cody's name, and they played it up, played it up, played it up. And then, sure as shit, there's only one royal family. They hit his AEW music. This fucking building lost their shit. They went fucking crazy for Cody. This guy comes out, and man, holy smokes. Oh, they're going to screw up Cody. Oh, he's going to be chasing the 24-7 title by the end of the year. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe. They had a they had a WrestleMania-level epic sort of match. You know, the old Triple H kind of matches you used to see. It was a very much a Triple H match. Yep, and yeah. uh, he ultimately got the win. Vinny could talk about the match, but man, he hit that crossroads and this place went crazy and they loved them some Cody Rhodes. Holy smokes. It was all really amazing. So, Seth comes out and everyone knows what's going to happen next and they make him wait and they make him wait and they make him wait and even Seth is like, don't make me wait. And then the lights go out and they make him wait and they make him wait and they make him wait. And finally, it is, it's just, I, I, I don't know if Cody like designed this music to work this way, but it's in a dead silent building with everyone desperately waiting to hear what happens. And you just hear his own voice softly say, wrestling has more than one royal family and the place explodes. Dude, they exploded. And he slowly rises up from the uh, from the stage, and he's turning aside. You can see the tattoo and make it very. I, mean, I thought you can do anything with a tattoo, but make it abundantly clear. It's AEW Cody Rhodes. He's got the same gear. He's got the same music. It's it's same tat. Same same tat. It didn't cover it up. Didn't wear <laughs> didn't wear a scarf. Turtleneck. But uh, yeah, turtleneck. Like the shield when they came out the first time. He just came out, and the thing about it was, it was such the crowd was so happy to see him. They were so energized. They wore themselves out. They were spent before the match even started. So for the first 10 or 15 minutes, these guys weren't doing a ton. They weren't doing nothing, but they weren't doing a ton. And the crowd was, they needed time to recover. They needed time to recover from the entrance. So it is a good thing this match went close to a half hour. Because the second half of it was super intense and very, very good. So... Cody was doing stardust spots. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Can we go to that? <laughs> Seth they popped won- big for that car wheel. <laughs> <laughs> they did. He did. Seth, I don't know if I, I may be the only person who noticed this, but he did the uh, reverse superplex or the inverted superplex, I guess, and rolled it through and hit Gold Dust's curtain call yeah. for a two count. So it kept uh, both guys were going for pedigrees all the time, and I was actually I was certain that Cody was going to hit one and win. Uh, but what actually happened was eventually Cody finally hit a crossroads. A second crossroads, tease a third one, but let him go to hit the dusty roads, flip, flop, and fly. And then finally, the third crossroads put him away. This was a very, very good wrestling match. Man, I, I'm just, I was, I've been bombarded today with people that are like, didn't people just hate Cody like a few weeks ago or a month ago or whatever? I don't think people get what's going on here. These WWE fans, I mean, have you ever been on my timeline? They hate AEW. So the fact that this guy, left AEW to come to... Now he's a hero. Now he's their guy. He left them to come to us! So of course they went crazy for him. Of course they love him. I don't know what they'll do with him ultimately as far as like babyface or heel, but I mean, they're gonna, you know, he's a hero to these people right now. But Brian, you told me that people who watch WWE don't know anything about AEW. Well, a lot so of them how did don't. they react so favorably? Well, a lot of them don't. But this is to a his music. hardcore traveling crowd. Oh, there he is. It's WrestleMania. <laughs> All yeah. right, fine. Yeah, that's what it is. Hardcores. <sighs> Fifty-three thousand hardcore fans paid tickets. Seventy thousand. Bought tickets. It was seventy thousand people. 
Brian. No, it wasn't. You have to count the attendants and the people Don't that are working. The, the, the stands. Jesus Christ. You guys ever seen, like, um... No, okay, do you guys watch SmackDown on uh, no. on Friday? Never. No. Okay, SmackDown was sold out, <laughs> all right? They had, had 11,000 people in the building. Yes. Okay. So according to Mark... Yes. Okay. Take all of those people, mm-hmm. double that number. Yeah. That's how many people are selling popcorn. I didn't say they were the just selling popcorn. Attendance. There's a lot of people behind the scenes, Brian. You'd be very surprised. Get out of here. You'd be very, very surprised. Anyway, move on, Vinny. <laughs> Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey. So here's the story, everybody, for those who want to know. So on Tuesday, uh, Ronda was doing an interview, and she said that she was she was going on last. She was the main event. And of course, I, yes. on Monday, Kevin Owens said, I'm the main event. So, uh, you know, one of those two was not going to be the main event. So uh, Rhonda thought that she was going on last. She wasn't. Kevin Owens' show was going on last. And uh, when she found out, she was furious, I was told. And uh, one person who uh, knows her, so I presume that this is true, said that uh, she was so mad yesterday, Friday, that uh, she just she walked out. So she wasn't at the Hall of Fame. And uh, cooler heads prevailed, I guess. And she showed up today. And she did the match. And they had a... I mean, they worked their asses off in this match. This match also had some sloppiness. But, I mean, they tried really hard. And they did not half-ass this. And she went all out. But uh, she was angry that they did not go on last. I mean, they should have just told her, fucking Steve Austin's going to do a match. <laughs> Maybe that was supposed to be top secret until today. But, uh, I mean, you can't be furious because you're not going on last when Steve Austin's doing his fucking last match after 19 years in fucking Texas. But she was angry. But now she's back and wrestling. So, I saw a lot of hate for this match online. I thought it was, on the whole, really good. It was. It went a little long. It wasn't perfect. The ending was wonky. There was some sloppiness. The crowd was really dead. The crowd was Mm. dead for a a lot of it. Yeah. But uh, I thought I really enjoyed it. I did laugh for Michael Cole, who earlier claimed to do like 26 WrestleManias, I think he said. A quarter century of WrestleManias. And he says with a straight face, I don't think Ronda Rousey will be able to out-wrestle Charlotte Flair. I'm pretty sure the Olympic judo medalist will handle the gymnast just fine. I'm pretty confident that we take her to the ground if she wants to. And she did, by the way, do a ton of judo in this match, and Ronda or Charlotte went down every single time. So, as noted, there was a sloppiness. There was a missed moonsault spot that I don't know what they were going for. I can tell you what happened was not the intent. But Charlotte goes for a moonsault and just lands on her feet and stops. Dude, briefly. she's done this a hundred times. It's the Andrade thing where you go for the moonsault off the top, they roll out of the way, you land on your feet, and then you a standing moonsault. Charlotte has tried this dozens of times. I don't think she's ever, ever done it right. This time she did a moonsault, then she did a back handspring and like totally missed Rhonda and then just leaped on her. But yes, this one should be removed from the arsenal. It did not, it did not go very well. Uh, I did like uh, when they were fighting in the corner, and Charlotte was trying like a Boston Crab in in the corner, but Ronda sat up with a face full of fury and arm dragged her down, and they keep they keep scrambling for submissions, and Ronda's going for the arm bar, and Charlotte's going for the figure eight, and on the like eighth try, she finally gets the figure eight, but Ronda grabs the ankle and re- reverses it, and suddenly it's old school pro wrestling. I have turned the figure four over. Now the pressure is on your leg. You're in pain. Uh, it goes on for a while. So the first wacky finish is Charlotte hit the, or excuse me, uh, Rhonda hit the Piper's Pit, which is basically uh, Samoan drop kind of thing. But she hits the move, and Charlotte puts her leg on the ropes plainly and clearly, and the ref counts one, two, three, wait. <laughs> and then he points to the leg. So it was right. Her leg was on the ropes the whole time. The pin should not have counted. But you the way know what it actually was great about it? was Rhonda tells the referee, you can't go back on your call. Because if you've ever watched MMA, once the referee waves it off, like even if it was a fuck up, it's over. Like yeah. you never ever under any circumstances, even if the referee knows he screwed up, even if there's a million instant replays, you cannot start it over again. So she's yelling at the ref, you can't c- go back on your call, you can't at a pin. But it's WWE, so he went back on his call. Went back on his call. So shortly thereafter... Charlotte's going for the figure eight again. 
Ronda boots her off, and Charlotte spears the ref. <laughs> this is not a bump. This is an assault. This is a tackle. So he's down, and he misses Charlotte tapping to an arm bar. And Ronda goes to wake him up, and she turns around, and Charlotte hits a big boot <laughs> and pins her. Yeah, she pins her with a boot. Like, I, I blinked a couple times. Like, was that, that was really a boot? Okay. I mean, it was... If you kick me in the face, I'll probably stay down for a three count, so all right. But it was weird. So, yeah, it was not perfect. It was not the best women's match on this night. But uh, I enjoyed it on the whole. Well, the finish, I mean, I, I presume that this is just going to lead to... Uh, you need some finishes to lead to whatever the next WrestleMania Backlash show or whatever it's going to be called is. But uh, I presume, you know, they gave Ronda a bunch of wins that didn't count. And then she ends up getting pinned uh, after a visual submission. So I presume WrestleMania Backlash or whatever is just going to be a submission match, and that's when Ronda wins a title. But uh, I think that, I mean, anything can change, but I'm pretty sure that the two main events for next year's WrestleMania that they want, who knows what will happen a year from now, is Becky versus Ronda for whichever title, or both titles, and Roman Reigns versus The Rock. Whether we get one or either, I guess we'll have to see. But, you know, Ronda's got to either get this title or uh, I guess she can not get the title all year, but I find that hard to believe. I would bet it's champion versus champion, Ronda versus Becky next year. So then Becky will have to get back at some point. But anyway, I thought it was all right. Yeah, we, I, I didn't really watch the match because I was playing catch with Brian's kid the whole time. How'd she do? Uh, she like would do a flips and catch the ball and then kick it back to me and then like Kicking I'd throw around. it and she'd flip around and grab it and kick it back to me. What's going on, Brian? What do you hear? Ghosts? I, thought I heard my one of my children screaming. Oh. <laughs> I'll find out in a moment. Might have been that same one actually. Watch they catch again. Man, you should have seen one. The the, the kids were at grandma's and so uh, they came in right before the uh, Ronda match actually. And Paisley came in, hi to Mark, never seen her. I don't think she would remember you at all. If she ever saw you, she was like two. Yeah, I haven't seen that kid in forever. And uh, and then she starts playing ball with Mark. We're watching this show, she's playing ball with him. Man, Holly walked in, and she gave him the fucking Hana face. Yeah, she was really not pleased to see me. No, she, she, just, me she turned her head, and she just glanced at him eye. sideways, yeah. like, who the fuck is this guy here? And then you made some comment. You actually cracked her. She smiled. <laughs> and then she was done. And then she started screaming. Just yeah. bloody fucking murder. And went away. So at this point, we are three plus hours into the main show. And we get a fuck ton of video packages. It was a lot. Like 50 minutes of video packages. I was done. One of which was for Stone Cold Steve Austin. And was set to Bob with the Bob, Bob with Kid <laughs> Rock. <laughs> And this surprises watching, you why? I'm watching a Steve As Austin Kevin video. Kevin fucking Dunn is in charge of this production. Ba, am I back in college? Do I have homework to do? No, but you know who the audience are going after? Old people. Yeah. By the way, we were at, uh, I went to the, the some Easter thing of the church. Yeah, I tweeted a picture of me and Hanalei when she was doing the Hana face. And uh, they had an Easter egg hunt. And so she's got this little basket. And she's going and she's putting all of her eggs in one basket. And, uh, and pretty soon the basket's full. But there's eggs everywhere. So she's trying to put more eggs in one basket. And this doesn't work. She fucking pitched the biggest fit. She's screaming. She's crying. She's so mad she can't get more eggs in this fucking basket. And so uh, one of the people from the church comes over and they see her crying. They go, would she feel better if we gave her a stuffy? And I was thinking, what? He comes out with this fucking bear that's like this big. And he just gave her this enormous bear. And I thought, what lesson is she learning here? Why did you let them do it? She pitched a giant fucking fit, and they gave her a huge bear. Why as didn't a, you say she reward. can't have the bear? Well, you know, then she had the bear, turn and then I was going to have to tear the bear away from the her. Band away. Turn the band away. Turn the bear away. The kid won't learn any lessons. And why was it Easter? Easter's out for two fucking weeks, Brian. I don't understand Well, this. don't yell at me for that. I Jesus just Christ thing. has not risen yet. I haven't been crucified Brian. yet. He hasn't even, yeah, it yeah. hasn't been Palm Sunday. They haven't strung him up there. He hasn't gotten dead. They haven't put him in that cave. He hasn't come out of the cave. It's not Easter. Thank God Craig's not here tonight. Why? Is he super into Easter? He's he's a very religious man. Oh. Big, big into Jesus. Big All right, Jesus. well, sorry, Craig. Uh, <laughs> please don't kill me. Right. What a replacement for Craig. He's way bigger here. than me. <laughs> Mark. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I don't believe in anything. I, I don't think anything you said was untrue. Yeah. The tone's a little disrespectful. Well, but yeah. I mean, quite frankly, you had the timeline down. I think, yeah. well, I went to Catholic Better school like, for eight years of my uh, upbringing, kindergarten to seventh grade. And explains that's why much. I turned out how fucking stupid I am. That's All right, next next uh, segment here. <laughs> All right, so I can just strive to be an event in about 20 seconds max, I think, but they tried it out for a long time. It's the Kevin Owens Show with Steve Austin. Owens comes out. He runs down Texas. He runs down Austin. He says, I'm not going to ring him out till I want to, but the glass shatters. Austin comes out. I, I, I don't want to alarm you. He was quite popular here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, he drives his wacky go-kart down to the ring. It's a four-wheeler. Why do we keep calling it a go-kart? Because <laughs> go-kart's funnier. <laughs> All right, fine. So they're sitting there, and, and, and Owens convinced him to, to chat for a few minutes. And they get a close-up. And I, was, I, I people, I, maybe I'm going to be one, but... Steve Austin is sitting there. I know he has been bald with a goatee for decades now, but I thought that man, he looks 19 years older. He's, he's been through some stuff. So eventually. He has, but for a 58 year old guy, he looked great. Yeah. So eventually, Owen says, The secret is I didn't come invite you here to chat. I invited you to challenge you to a no holds barred match. No, Austin says, Fine. And I was very much expecting the bell to ring. Austin would duck a clothesline, hit the kick, and the stutter and pin him. Yep. That is not what happened. <laughs> no. And you know, it's funny, too, because they announced the fake attendance. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they sold uh, about 53,000, 54,000 tickets for this show here. And I thought, you know what? If they would have announced that Stone Cold Steve Austin is wrestling Kevin Owens in a no-holds-barred match, it's going to be his retirement match in Texas after 19 yeah. years of not wrestling, they probably would have actually done the number that they claimed. Do you know, well, that too, they, they could have sold 200,000 tickets for that match. Well, I don't know about that, but... But it, it, how much better this show would have been if they just did the promo on Raw and just had the match here? Yeah. Because this show did you know, I, I did honestly, a promo and a surprise 15-minute match. I, I actually believe that Steve Austin probably decided exactly what he was going to do, like, today or yesterday. That is actually possible. Because, you know, he he does not... He, he would not have wanted to go out here and have a bad last match. And so I'm sure he trained and he trained and he trained and he trained and he was like... I'm going to see how I feel the weekend of WrestleMania. And if I feel like I can do it, then we'll fucking do an impromptu match. And if I don't, it's just going to be, you know, a little bit of a brawl, boot stun or whatever. But man, this guy was feeling it. Because he went out there, and the first five minutes of this match, you know, normally you warm up in the back, and then you go down to the ring and you wrestle. But that wasn't happening here. He was going down to sit in a chair and talk for ten minutes. So there was no warm-up time, really. So yeah. the first few minutes of this match was his warm-up. And it started It started slow. Couple of boots, then some quicker boots. Couple of boots in the corner, quicker boots. And he starts getting a little more warmed up. And then he gets thrown into the post. And he kind of does the old sit-down bump where you don't really take a bump, but you just like hit the post and you sit down and fall back. And uh, and then he sends uh, Kevin Owens through the table. Oh, Kevin Owens taking all the bumps. Austin's yeah, not doing anything. Yeah, 100 of the bumps. Yes. Yep. And then finally, you know, Austin throws him over the barricade. They start brawling in the crowd, and I thought, hey, you know, waste some time crowd brawling. It's easy. Just you know, punch each other, or whatever. All of a sudden, Kevin Owens hooks this fucking guy outside, not on like you know some pad on the fucking cement, and he gives Steve Austin a vertical suplex on the cement. And it was fucking on at that point. <laughs> now Austin's like, he's taking bumps. He's giving this dude suplexes on the ramp. Like, he was working. And, you know, by the end, this was a good match. Mm -hmm. This was a good match from a 58-year-old guy that hasn't wrestled in 19 years. And by the way, his last match, you can read about his last match and in the hospital the night before. And yep. You know, all that shit, and then... You they know, did their own documentary on it at one point. Yep, told, don't ever wrestle again, your neck is fucked, blah, 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 blah. Here he is, 19 years later, and he had a good match in the main event of WrestleMania that he can be proud of, and yep. Kevin Owens, should he should retire tomorrow. Oh, Owens, Owens will never yeah, top this, I mean, yes. my God. <laughs> this was like, it was so great, and he wins, and then he gets the beer, and then he stuns Kevin, and he drinks more beer, and then he's... Stuns that Byron Saxton, thank God. Drinks some more beer. Everyone's going crazy. They're all happy. He's waving everybody. 
Fuck, this was so great. This was an awesome end to this WrestleMania. It ended with Austin celebrating with his brother, and I legit thought the brother was doomed. Oh, man, I thought for sure he was stunning <laughs> yeah. his brother. Yeah. I, was, I was certain. Imagine you're Stone Cold Steve Austin's brother. It's been 30 years we say, man, it's just one time I'd love to take one of them stunners from you, right? It, maybe he has in the backyard or something. But So I was watching Austin very carefully here to see exactly what he did. He took that massive suplex on the cement, which is a that, that's a grown man bump, don't get me wrong. He delivered a pair of suplexes on the stage. Other than that, I don't, I don't think he took any real bumps. He didn't take any bumps in the ring. 90% of the match was outside the ring anyway. Yeah. All of his bumps were outside the ring. On hard things. Yes. yes. Not on the mat. Um, he never ran. Not one time. They did one bit where he was whipped in the barricade for, at very close range. And he took about six steps to go six feet, and then immediately just bounced off the barricade and clotheslined Owens inside out. So the point of being, he took the stuff he couldn't do and didn't do it. And even after he got warmed up, it was still, this was not, this is a very, very good main event brawl. It was not a 1999 Stone Cold Steve Austin wild out of control brawl. Um, but they did what they needed to do. The crowd absolutely loved it. They got back of the ring. He didn't get blown up. He, he, was never, in, he never got he blown was up. In Not great one time. Shape. Yes, he, he, he looked great well. after he the was, match. Yes, probably went the back and regretted his last match. <laughs> this guy could Pretty do this bad. regularly. Yes, yes. Owens hits the stunner, gets a two count out of it. Owens knew, knows that was his last best shot. He goes to grab the chair and does the best Kurt Angle chair spot since Kurt Angle, where he swings, misses, a hit, hits the ropes, bonks himself in the face. And Austin hits a stutter and wins, and the place goes crazy. And then the post match, Brian already all talked about. It. So, on the, uh, uh, like, as a wrestling match, it was a good match. It was three stars or three and a quarter stars. Nostalgia scale, 316 stars. Wow. That's a lot of stars. That is. I that don't is. know what kind of rating system you're using. We do our own. System. My own. Uh, <laughs> I gave a match a million stars a little while ago. Wow. What match? Yeah. Which one was that? There have been a few like that. Uh, it was no. Danielson and. Oh, Danielson Moxley versus Moxley. Yeah. A million? It was about a million stars. A million stars? All right, fine. Yeah. Okay. Fucking the, the that seems like a lot. Brian Danielson Wheeler Yuta match on Wednesday was about uh, 10 stars. Huh. Holy shit, that was awesome. Does Uncle Dave know about it's your star been ratings that you're using? Subjective, brother. We do what the, we want. This whole weekend has reminded me how great pro wrestling actually is and can be and how much fun it is and how you should like seek out the wrestling you like and watch it as often as you can. There is so much great pro wrestling in the world. Go watch it, please. Yeah, but the problem is there's too much of it. Well, tomorrow, Vinny could go awfully wrong, and you'll be regretting saying that. You know, Maybe you'll we'll like, see. It's really <laughs> fucking terrible. You know what I really liked about this, Brian? Vinny? What'd you really like the, about it? You know what I really liked about it? What? That Brian and Uncle Dave didn't know it was going to happen, so it didn't get fucking spoiled for me. Actually, so, we, we, we said exactly like how it was going to go, which was Austin's going to decide if it's going to be a match or not. Well, I, I like Mark came on the show to bury our, his, this website. <laughs> Yeah, that's his gimmick. It's all love. It's it comes from a place of love. It's not though. It's hate. No, it's, no. You hate it. No with, hate in this you heart. hate it when Brian and Dave spoil things. <laughs> I do. Well, then but don't I, fucking listen. I, that's hate. I, I'm not fucking forcing you to put the goddamn headphones. on. I don't on. listen. I just see things yeah, on the internet. Well, get off the internet, dude. Uh, go go touch grass, brother. Touch grass. Hey, listen. Tomorrow, <laughs> You're so allegedly, old. allegedly, we got New Day versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland because it got cut today. So uh, they better hope they go on first. Then we got, uh, which that should be a, a, it should be fine. Zelina and Carmella, Sasha, Naomi, Rhea and Liv, Natty and Shayna. It might be all right. I don't have high hopes for that one. Knoxville and Sami Zayn, I actually think it's going to be good. Yeah. That's my great. prediction. Pat McAfee, Austin Theory, I think it's going to be good. RK Bro, Street Profits and Alpha Academy, I think it's going to be really good. Edge and AJ, as long as they don't go 40 minutes, should be a great match. Lashley and Omos will... I don't know what the hell that's going to be. And I think Roman Reigns and Brock is going to be a great match. So uh, I was roundly ridiculed when I said that, uh, that... When I read the card for night one and I said, this looks like a bunch of good matches, I wasn't wrong. So that's my prediction for night two. I think it's going to be a good show tomorrow. Thank God I'm not there. That's all I got to say. Anything else, Mark? No. All right. I've done nothing but watch wrestling all weekend. I haven't showered. Don't say. I haven't combed my hair. So uh, I've I've showered regularly. I wonder if I would know that. Same. I haven't. Yeah, me too. No, I'm yeah. disgusting right now. And I hope you're all happy. 
Also, I could watch a whole bunch of wrestling, including night two of this uh, WrestleMania show. And, uh, yeah, oh, look at these people in the chat. Overall, a fun show, they said. Can't believe it. Surprise. Hmm. I feel like that, uh, you know, I, I told y'all. These are going to be two fun shows. And, in fact, they were two fun shows. It right, Mark? Am I wrong? One no, and a half. It, Bro, you love that jackass it, match so much. It's fine. You that howled watching that match. <laughs> but it's, You it's, had the time of your you life. shut up? It's fine. That, you know, they were good shows. It's fine. But you're just sitting over here doing this fucking... Uh, yep, I that's all I do. It. I'm Brian Alvarez. Yep, yep. Who was the man that had the... the yeah, I got the a Barry hand. Horowitz shirt. I ever told Barry you that? Har- yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, great. Yes. That's yes. you right now. Well, you're right. You're right. Because sometimes I am right, damn it. Yeah. Let's talk about these, uh, well, this show, I guess. We talked about, if, you, if you're if you just tuning in, you never watched this show before, we talked about Night 1 yesterday, so you have to go find that one. This is only the Night 2 review, and uh, it's a pretty fun show, i got to say. It was a pretty fun show. And as I noted in the chat here before we started, if you didn't like the Jackass match, there's probably another post-show somewhere that you should watch. <laughs> probably not this one. Because I don't think you're going to end up happy. If you hated that match. Let us begin, Vinny. We watched WWE WrestleMania Night 2. Mar- uh, Mar- I did it again. I'm April Mar- what? 3rd. April 3rd, twenty. This is a hard job, Mark. <laughs> I don't think you understand the responsibility of reporting the date of yes. WrestleMania when reviewing oh. it. Yes. Even though it's written here. I wrote it down correctly, mind you. I just saw 4 slash 3 slash 22 and read it. March. Hold on a second. Let me get this straight, well, Vinny. Vinny. No, no. It was written... Yeah. And what you said was different? But he wrote yes. the number. He wrote wow, the number. what a massive irony that what was written was yeah. different than what was said. Hmm. Yes. All right. What are you talking about? What you don't you, know what I'm talking what about? What are you alluding to? You don't know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know well, what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. Why would I ask if I knew what well, you were Well, because you, you, you scour my Twitter during the show, and I made it abundantly clear what I'm talking about. So yes. every, every year they put up a fake number, oh, and uh, they had a fake number last night. And uh, they had a fake number this evening here. And I'm going to get the exact number here, which actually... Oh, here it is. So on the screen, they wrote Mm -hmm. 78,453. That was the fake attendance for tonight. 78,453. That's pretty good. But verbally, they said 77. 453. That's even better. So no, it's actually worse. 78 oh. is better than 77. Oh, yeah, you're right. So I anyway, you said 73. Yes, what they you what said they that what they said and what they wrote on the screen were actually different numbers, which is such an irony. But anyway, if you want to know what the attendance was, one of those numbers is fake. You can decide which one. Wasn't it both? Well, actually the answer is both, but that's beside the point. All right, Vinny, go ahead. We watched WrestleMania Night 2 April 3rd, 2022. Good job. It opened with Triple H coming out, thanking the fans, announcing his retirement, welcoming us to WrestleMania, leaving his boots in the ring and leaving. It took 50 minutes, and it was worth every second. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not complaining about the length of this at all. I thought he was going to actually do an old-school 20-minute promo, you know, for old time's sake. But he didn't. He uh, welcomed us to WrestleMania. He put his old boots in the middle of the ring. His family was there at, at ringside. His oldest daughter looks exactly like Stephanie. And he hugged them, and he was had tears in his eyes, and everybody cheered and chanted his name, and it was awesome. Great moment. Our opening match, RK Bro versus the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. So I don't know what I was expecting here, but what I got was a a super uh, like 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 a like an indie style sprint, like a like a party match. I was not expecting a party match here with Randy Orton and friends, but that is what I got. They did a thousand crazy things. I was watching this; it occurred to me how many of the guys in this match and the post matches we'll get to will be great in a blood sport. There's a there's a blood sport show waiting to happen with this whole WWE tag team division. But they did a million crazy things. Uh, Montez Ford, earlier in the match, took a monkey flip and flipped over all the way onto his face. The second time Chad Gable tried one, Ford flipped all the way over but landed on his feet. And uh, they hit a giant uh, uh, blockbuster where they only got got two. 
There was more craziness. Uh, Dawkins avoided an RKO, hit Randy with a big spine buster, or a dive on everyone on the floor. It looked like Montez Ford was going to hit Orton with a splash and pin him, but Riddle hit a super cutter off the top rope to take Ford out. And then Gable tried to dive onto Orton, but Orton caught him in an RKO and pinned him. A tremendously fun match. I thought this match was awesome. If you get past the uh, you know the rules that make no sense, where it's a it's a four way or it's a three way, so there's no disqualifications, but these nerds stand on the apron patiently, which I can understand. You know, there's no DQs, but you still have to have a legal man in the ring. So if me and Vinny are teaming, Vinny has to be on the apron for the moment that I tag him, right? So that's why at some point you would need to be on the apron, okay? But if Mark puts me in a sharpshooter and I'm about to tap, you could get in the ring and save me, and it wouldn't be a DQ. Instead, Randy Orton's on the apron. He's going, come on, you can make it. Come tag. And poor Riddle's get his fucking leg ripped out. But Randy Orton will not get in that ring because he is a man. It was a code of honor. It was, uh, I guess, uh, adhered to in this, this match that was, tonight. That was the Friday show. Well, it, was, it was this show, too. Same with that uh, women's four-way tag. But, man, this was great. Chad Gable, he was awesome. Otis was a lot of fun. Street Profits, that uh, blockbuster gimmick. Yeah, I like my trophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Worst uh, worst non-wrestler? That just means worst person. Basically, yeah. Very proud this, of that. This Montez Ford was a legit 18 feet in the air when he did this blockbuster. It was ridiculous how high he was up there. I don't know if he was 18 feet in the air, but he was very, very high. Okay, Brian. You just got to argue with 18, everything. 18 Born, feet? Christ yes, sake. yes. I'm 18 feet. I'm calling it now, Brian. <laughs> All right. Did you write 17 feet? Since huh. we're, uh, you know, the numbers. Anyway, yeah, it was a great match. <sighs> I've already heard all of Brian's complaints. No, you haven't. I have. No, you've heard my complaints. You sat there right there, and you complained the same things to me the entire... But what do you want me to do? Just sit there silently? That's what me and Vinny do. (laughs) That's weird. Silently watch the show and save all our material for the air. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I guess. All right. Uh, Liked it. Yeah, it was very good. So afterwards, the uh, Street Profits want to congratulate RK Bro, share a toast with them in their red solo cups. They all invite Gable Steveson into the ring with them to, to also partake. But Gable's drink is knocked away by Chad Gable. And the one Olympic wrestler is challenging the other Olympic wrestler and is trying to run him down. But he's a small Olympic wrestler, so he is... He doesn't understand these weight classes after being well, in the Olympics. There is a, it, it didn't go well for him. He's, he's no. running his mouth and Steveson grabbed him and suplexed him through the sky and then had his drink with his new friends and all was right with the world. Bobby Lashley versus Omos. God, help me. Was this shit or what? It was bad. I, it was I, horrible. I, I've seen worse. I may have been expecting worse. It I mean, we've all bad. seen worse, but yeah. I mean, with I all due respect Mania. to the guy. It I'm was sure not the worst a, match of the night. I'm sure he's a nice guy and all, but this, this Omos. Oh, God, no. He sucks. Sure? He sucks at this job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's been doing it a long time. There. And uh, Corey Graves was talking about inexperience, and it's like, dude, he's been doing this a long time. And he had a match with AJ Styles on Raw about two months ago, and it was bad. And uh, I can count on, I think, one finger the number of bad AJ Styles matches I've seen in my lifetime. And when I saw this guy have a bad match with AJ Styles, it was like, I'm not saying he needs to be unemployed, but you know you have a developmental place that you could send him back to for like four or five more years? Dude... Bro, he could not have a good match with AJ, and he did not have a good match with Lashley, and he can't sell, and no. he doesn't move very well, and he doesn't do anything good except be big. God bless the guy. And uh, and then Lashley beat him. So I'm wondering if they're cutting bait for a while. It, it, uh, I w- you would think so. Gi- giants don't have, uh, well, it's the big show, I guess, but <laughs> giants who lose a lot usually don't last very long. Um, yeah, uh, there was an epic fuck up corner, a fuck up in the corner early, and uh, Omos's offense is either clubbering forearms or squeezing. And lastly, he kept going for a suplex and couldn't get it, and finally he got it and hit a pair of spears, and he won. The crowd popped for the finish, at least. But yes, it was bad. You know, you remember uh, Braun Strowman? Yes. Sure. Way, way, way better than Omos. Yes. And uh, you know they fired Strowman. Yes. Because they had Omos. No. They don't do anything with Shankly because they have Omos. 
They haven't done a thing with Commander Aziz. He's he's being buried. Because they have Omos. <laughs> they have Omos. Like, wh- I don't know, dude. Sounds like a disease. Vince loves these giants, but, like, they're never any good. And now what do you do? Like, you'd be better off hiring Strowman back at this point. This is not good. Bad match. I, I dozed off twice during this epic, long pay-per-view, and this was one of them. Just in time for the winner to get his hand raised, the other was in that uh, two-minute tag match. This, yeah. did yep. not, this did not hold my interest, Brian Alvarez. No. <laughs> well, what did you think of Sami Zayn wrestling Johnny Knoxville? I mean, how much time have we got? Ka-ching! Yeah, we could talk about this for... Uh, we do an entire hour-long show on this. Tom place. wants to talk about this match for an hour tomorrow. Okay, well, I won't he steal pretty his much, He pretty much decided that this was the greatest match in the history of wrestling. <laughs> And, well, uh, I, I mean, will, I, you know, wrestling-wise, it wasn't, but... It was a lot of fun. Bro, we were promised a match with Sami Zayn, Johnny Knoxville, and the cast of Jackass, okay? That's what we were promised. Mm-hmm. What did we fucking get? <laughs> we, All of that and so much more. <laughs> we got everything that you would have... And yes, so much more. See, I thought, okay, this Knoxville's gonna do a bunch of dumb shit and everything like that. I wasn't expecting... The human-sized mousetrap. No. I wasn't expecting the giant fucking hand. I wasn't expecting all these nerds to show up and do spots. I mean, they went above... This is a rare example, by the way. I don't want to, you know, give a backhanded compliment to WWE. But they'll promise a lot of things, and they'll either not give it to you, or they'll barely deliver. Bro, they over-delivered more than maybe any other match I've ever even seen promoted by WWE ever. I mean, this was... Everything you would expect times about a hundred. And it was funny and it was fucking violent. Like yes. Jesus, Sami Zayn was beating the shit out of these poor fuckers. And they were beating the shit out of Sami Zayn. Poor Knoxville must have got kicked or punted or whacked in the head like fifty times. Another day in the know, office. Coming yeah. off almost getting killed by that bull. Yep. And then, you know, we man's trying to kill poor fucking Sami Zayn. And then Sami Zayn gets his receipt. Oh, he, he did. booted this wee man right in the head. Do you wanna, do you almost talk killed him. About what you said about wee man? Yeah. Little <laughs> little folks are scary. That's not what you said. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm not, what okay. Was, what was the quote that you said? He I don't remember. Out, he came out and you said, uh, <sighs> These little people are scary. You said something They're dangerous. About, like, I don't like these little people. I did <laughs> not say I didn't said. like them, you idiot. Says, <laughs> and by the way, something terrible. Allow me to explain. <laughs> I'm not talking little people like the current term for the individuals that used to be referred to as midgets. Hey. I'm talking any little person. I'm talking, you don't have kids, Mark. You're not supposed to. You ever had a two-year-old that wants to jump on your stomach, but they stomp on your balls instead? Doesn't fucking matter if they're two. No. They crush your nuts. Or you're in jiu-jitsu class and, you know, they're doing a showcase and their parents are there. And you're like, oh, I'm going to let this kid choke me. Little do you know, this fucking kid's arms are exactly long enough to go all the way around your neck. And they're skinny, sharp fucking bones. Next thing you know, you're <laughs> fucking half dead. It's the worst choke you've ever had in your fucking life. And you've been choked by grown men. It was I, horn swoggle, you know, the rep that guy had? Hit you as hard as he fucking could. I'm, Golly! And this little guy, <laughs> Wee Man, we, holy fuck! It's just Wee Man. It's not. They didn't smarten man. this guy up. He was like, "I'm gonna hit the Sami Zayn as hard as I can. I'm gonna try to break his fucking bones. Like this is gonna end up in a movie someday. So we may as well go all out here." And then you know, Sammy got fucking booted one too many times. He was like, "Now it's my turn, you little shit!" And he fucking booted this guy's fucking head off. Holy smokes! This match. You know this was? This was a... They should have put on the poster, you know, for Tim Flowers where it goes mean guy match. This should have said receipt match. That's all it was from fucking start to finish. Guys giving and taking receipts. Golly. Just for the record, I've never been in jujitsu class. So I have no you idea don't what say. the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> you had me fooled, Mark. Yeah, I'm a... I'm, you also told me yesterday you'd never been in a gym. I found that hard to believe. Is that true? Look at this body, okay. Brian. Oh, right. Look at this body. Yeah, you I've had painful encounters with little people as a parent. Been... You kidding me? <laughs> I've been just... Brian said terrible things about little people. No, I didn't. <laughs> well, small people in general, you idiot. <laughs> Including you, I might add. Bro, we're the same size, sir. No, we're not the same size. Well, you got we might be muscle. the same oh, height. Man, you, you, anyway, what do you, you think of this match, Vinny? Talk about that mousetrap. 
Well, this match started this as... This fucking mousetrap. As every 1990s Attitude Era hardcore match ever. Just Sami Zayn hitting Johnny Knoxville with every weapon shot in the world. Stop signs, uh, probably kendo sticks, chairs, the stairs, whatever. Then it turned into a cameo party where all the knock, uh, uh, jackass guys started running in. Pontius is running in in his skivvies. Wee Man is coming out from under the ring. Yeah, apparently he lives under there with Hornswoggle, I guess. Uh, he ah, comes out, d- yeah. just beats Sammy's ass, body slammed Sammy Zayn. And the uh, if you if somebody that was a spot of the weekend. Somebody put them side by side. No joke. We man slamming Sami Zayn looks exactly like Hulk Hogan slamming Andre. That's Andrew. my point. They should put those together in a montage. It looks like, like the, the beginning yeah. of the show where they show Hogan slamming Andre in that video. It should now be We Man slamming yes. Sami Zayn. So Sami came back and he, as you noted, punted We Man right in the nose. Oh, in the Just nose. Him right in the in fucking the nose. nose, bro. The only way this would have been worse if he would have used his toe. That At least he used the flat of his boot. I didn't laugh, by the way. Pontius is out there, and he's he's wearing speedos, right? It's smaller than wrestling gear, but it's not a thong or anything. This was and a French cut bikini. Let's he, be honest. But still, he starts grinding up against Sammy in the corner, and Sammy is suddenly uncomfortable that he's never had a sweaty shirtless man rubbing against him in a wrestling match yeah. before. Yeah, that made me laugh. So they do some stuff, and then the last act of this match, we went from the hardcore match to the Jackass cameo show to. Uh, a, 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 a Looney Tunes cartoon. They bring in a kicking machine to kick Sammy in the balls. Yes. They have a table with thumbtacks glued all over it. Not thumbtacks. Hey, mouse sorry, traps. Mouse, pardon me. Mouse traps. Correct. Thank you. Uh, and of course, the coup de gras, the giant man sized mouse trap, which almost malfunctioned. They Bro, got it into the ring. <laughs> this mouse trap, I mean, they made it out of PVC pipe. Okay. Yeah. This was the fakest looking stupid mousetrap you ever saw in your life. And the snapping action yes. was fucking slower than Mrs. High Spots. Mm. Poor Sami Zayn gets trapped under this thing and he has to sell it. He gets pinned and then he's pretending he can't escape this fucking mousetrap. I was crying. You know what this was? This was like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It was a live action yes. cartoon That's from start one. to yes. finish, this fucking match. I loved this match. Am I the only one? I can't be. I know you I did, Mark. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't think you're the only one. I definitely liked it, although I don't think I liked it as much as you did. I was more baffled by the whole thing, but I certainly Baffled? Didn't what were you expecting? <laughs> I was Holes? expecting, I was expecting a giant mouse trap. <laughs> Why? That caught me off guard. I mean, I wasn't expecting I a so giant happy. mouse trap, but when you <laughs> see it, you're like, well, of course there's a giant mouse trap in Listen, the ring. And uh, it's certainly not everyone's cup of tea. I think we know shit. Full it would be very polarizing. I think a lot of people, it would be, uh, your mileage may vary as per the, the review, but I give it a solid thumbs up. Oh, it was a thumbs up for sure. A big fucking giant oversized thumb. Craig, your thoughts? I'm saying. <laughs> if you check your brain at the door, this was fine. I did not like this. Oh, oh Craig. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, God. just... I've this... checked my brain at the door every time I've come over here. <laughs> that's that's fair. Yeah, why were you watching this show with your brain turned on? <laughs> Especially this match. That giant mouse trap was a better surprise than fucking Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking I mean, it was. Trap. We all knew Cody oh, was showing up. We didn't know a God. mouse trap was going to That's true. Was... That's actually true. What a great time. The uh, the the table covered in mouse traps. Obviously, the nobody at ringside had ever set a mouse trap in their lives because <laughs> they go off very easily. There's no way one of these was set. Come on now, I'm not well, an idiot. Well, yeah, you got to suspend your disbelief. Craig. I feel like I'm listening to myself rip like, apart some got... pro wrestling match. Craig, What's that's... this fucking guy talking about? Do you were... go, it's fake. Do you go to movies and say Superman? He men can't fly. <laughs> that guy this can't is... fly. <laughs> I guarantee you, Craig has never made that noise. This is. <laughs> What's happening? Dude, I watched a Joker throw that woman out the window the other day, and Batman jumps after her. He's not Superman, but somehow he fell 45 stories and landed on a car, and they were both fine. That's horse shit. This is sold as a sporting event and a sporting... No, it's not. Sports it was entertainment. entertainment. They didn't even say sports at the beginning of the show. They said the biggest night in entertainment. Entertainment. I was entertained. Okay. If you're not going to listen to my... Uh, opinions and don't ask for them, Brian. <laughs> Go, Go Move on. Oh, it's all my fault as Mark is talking all over you. I am not. I am not. You're a Craig. horrible person, Mark. Craig. Oh, I know. Craig, go ahead. Tell us. Tell no, us. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm muting good. myself. 
<laughs> Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley versus Shayna Baszler and Natalia versus uh, Queen Zelina and Carmella. So Corey Graves is uh, apparently getting married to Carmella in a few days, promising a huge celebration after this match is done. Yeah, they promised to fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not making that up. They did that in a storyline. They did that in a storyline backstage. <sighs> Carmella said, when we retain the titles at WrestleMania, Corey and I are going to get in the ring and have a live sex show. Huh. That's how they were selling WrestleMania. Huh. Why didn't they he... mention it at all during the show? I never heard this. Well, they didn't want to promise it and not deliver. Well, they didn't win. So yeah, well, Corey was very disappointed when they did not win. Yeah. I did, when they lost, Corey had a great line about how are we going to pay for our honeymoon? The Mania check's the biggest of the year. I laughed at that. That was actually... <laughs> yeah, you don't get any money <laughs> well, you don't get your WrestleMania. Win. You don't get your win bonus. She got money. She, he didn't say she didn't get zero. He didn't say she got zero dollars. I hate these poor he wrestlers. Was, he was counting on the Mania win bonus to pay for the honeymoon, and they didn't get it. <laughs> so he's got no money? Yeah, yeah. So that's that was that was his budget is smaller now than it was he, than he than he was going in. Uh, huh. He he had already budgeted this twenty thousand dollar win bonus, and now it's up in smoke. Oh, man. So what this match was was a like, mess, a complete and utter mess. Well, that, that too, that too. But there was seven women out there treating it like a fashion show and or a gymnastics competition. Or gymnastics I was meet. fine with all of that. Not even a competition. And then there was the eighth woman who was Shayna Baszler. Who just said, fuck all you and fuck whatever you want to do. I'm going to take you down and just tear ligaments one at a time. And she's ripping women limb from limb and shredding and tearing. And I'm giggling with glee. And she goes to make a cover. And like four women went in to break it up. And Shayna gave them all the mean mug. And all four of them backed down. Like, ah, oh, she's the best. Shayna's the best. They did a bunch of stuff. Some of it was cool. Some of it was screwed up. And eventually, Carmella was pinned with a double lung blower thing. I guess I, guess I should mention that Naomi and Sasha won. Yeah, went out the winners. But yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I enjoyed it for what it was. It exceeded my low expectations. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Wow. It was. I mean, it was there. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was definitely there. It was there. It's it's really hard to follow up a giant mouse trap. Yeah, they had to follow the mouse trap. Pinning him. That man. was impossible. What are you gonna do? Can't follow that. AJ Styles versus Edge. So Edge is now a full-on melodramatic cheeseball comic book villain. Well, we should talk about AJ's cheek very quickly. So oh, yeah. He, I heard from my sources, He Brian. was bleeding yeah. as, he, uh, as he came down the ramp. And the story I heard within 30 seconds was it was a pyro incident. Mm -hmm. But he actually may have cut his face on part of the set. But uh, regardless of which one it was, during his entrance was when he cut his cheek open. It wasn't like a fight or anything like that backstage. But, uh, boy, he was pissed. He oh, was pissed. I don't know what happened, but it ruined his WrestleMania. Well, if that's what happened in this match, that would explain a lot. Uh, so they had, like, a good three or four minutes at the start and a good three or four minutes at the end. 50 minutes of absolutely nothing in the middle. Wow. And then he shit Jeez. finish. Well, it was Jeez. a shit finish. Dude, we were in this, I, we, I don't know, we were close to three hours into the show. It's Sunday night of Mania weekend. I'm just exhausted. I've been watching great wrestling for days and days and days. And when you give me 15 minutes of subpar wrestling, I'm going to be angry about it this late into the weekend. So they're just doing stuff and lying there and doing stuff. And lying there. And I'm begging for AJ to make us come back. And finally he does. And for three or four minutes, it's actually very good. And then the big moves, the near falls, the people are back into this. And then Damian Priest apparently teleports to ringside. Damian Priest is like six foot five and 280 whatever pounds. And he's he dresses like a comic book villain, much like his new friend Edge. He's just there between the announcers and the ring. And no one has any idea how he got there. He's just there. He's watching AJ like they watch monitors. His back's to AJ. He's looking back over his shoulder. I guess they wanted the shot of his face and AJ's at the same time. That's the only way they can do it. And AJ stares at it for a minute and then goes for the forearm and he jumps right into his spear and he gets pinned. I just thought, dude, you just wasted like 20 minutes of my life to do that finish. Thumbs down. Well, I certainly would not give this a thumbs down. I thought they had a really good match. Great wrestling. Two pros. 
They didn't go 45 minutes, so I was thrilled beyond. I thought uh, they did. It felt to no, me like they did. they went like 19 when, when, or 20 minutes. When I went back and checked, like, how much is this match going? It's only been 20 minutes, I said to myself. Well, it was. I don't know how you could I thought add. it had 40. <laughs> well, it had. It was only 20. Well, I should have. And I thought they were really good, and it wasn't like the greatest WrestleMania match of all time, but I thought they, they worked really well. The finish was horrible. I mean... <laughs> Guy showed up, and the other guy got speared and pinned. Every distraction finish you've ever seen, which we don't deserve that shit at WrestleMania. But now we've got the Edge Lords, which I hope is their name. (laughs) Edge and Damian Priest. And they're going to be all raggly or whatever. I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was a good match. Am I the only one? Anyone else agree? I actually liked this match. Thank you, Craig. It was very well worked. Mute that man. (laughs) Um, AJ is... I know it's cliche. He's phenomenal. He's so good. And uh, I, I enjoy this. I really wanted to see Edge destroy his throne with a sledgehammer. You know? That's Cody's gimmick. I know. Yeah. That, that, that he's was got a new, joke. It, he's got a new throne. It's his mountain of omnipotence, they keep kept calling it. What in the world is that verbiage? My what? goodness. They hired the worst unemployed comic book writer they could find. And he pulled, like, noun... And uh, I don't, other noun, I guess. Mountain of Omnipotence. But uh, that's what he came up with. The Mountain of Omnipotence. Hmm. What did you think of this match, Mark? See, I heard him wrong the first time. I thought it said impotence. That's wow. a bad mountain. Don't want that <laughs> right. mountain. There's no it's such terrible thing. Mountain. Yeah. Oh, I, I, Brian, I thought the match was fine. Well, you know, I at the end when he went for the forearm and he got speared, I looked at you and said, he's going to get speared. You and did. And then it happened. Yeah. So I was you right. You should be writing for these people. I was right for once. Can you come uh, up with something like Mountain of Omnipotence? No, that's too good. No. That's too good. I've never written anything that good in my life, well, ever. That's why I'm sure? sitting here. What about uh, Fear of Sleep? <laughs> that was a really bad movie. We, oh. did, we did two really bad movies together. What was Hopefully the other one? we can do a third one someday. The other one was so bad, I don't remember it. Worst Sleep Plans, you dickhead. <laughs> Fucking feature film we made. You. I, I didn't have much of a you role, You were like I? a pedophile or something? <laughs> I can't remember what oh, you Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was. I was some ju- creep. Yeah, you were a creep that yeah. wanted to jerk off in front of somebody in, in a fucking junkyard. That was your role. I was in and, a car, and I brought this up, right? And then- We filmed in a junkyard. I remember uh, yeah, this Yeah, and I- and you, I like Fear of Sleep way better. And I accidentally shot you, or somebody yeah, accidentally Yeah, that's right. I remember this or, No, somebody accidentally- Hit you with a pipe and that killed you. That is small. Man, role. I don't remember that fucking movie. You don't whatsoever. remember it either, so don't yell at me. <laughs> You're so mad at me, and then you can't remember a fucking thing but about it. Like, it what? was your movie. What other movie? Like we had a premiere for the fucking thing. Well, that I you know were at, that. For fuck's sake. But I did a lot of those. Huh. Hey, Vinny, you they run together. You've done a lot of. You've done a lot of. Movie pre- anyway, the they match. They don't do my job. I don't mind. It was. It was. I got a yeah. resume this long. And then they're gonna. You know, it seems like they're gonna do a new like Ministry of Darkness type of thing. You know, I actually had to do a, a student cool. film once uh, where I had to play some character, and uh, I did a total Vince McMahon. Like I did the strut and I did everything like that, and I actually thought it was great. And it's never come to light. I've never found it. I don't know if they ever finished it. I don't know. I was so disappointed. Brian, ah! Brian literally got cast in the first movie that we made together. We didn't know each other. He came yep. into the audition. I looked at his fucking resume, and I was fucking shitty hungover yeah. at that fucking thing. And I looked at his resume, and it said that he wrote The Death of WCW. Yeah, with because I had, I'd done, like, uh, no films, and so I did make a resume, and I was like, I haven't done any films. Let's put some fucking book I wrote. And I was so like, I put a fucking book on my acting resume, <laughs> and Mark happens to be a wrestling fan. And so he's like, you wrote The Death of WCW? Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. He goes, you're hired. Yeah. And I got the gig. I remember that, and it said that your eyes are black. Your eye well, color they is are, black. Basically. And I was like, that's fucking weird. Like it's hard. This guy's well, it is fucking, fucking weird. weirdo. And that's, you should see my cameos. It. They're that's fucking what? creepy. You do cameos? Yeah, it's a long story. People pay Go you? ahead, Vinny. <laughs> New Day versus Seamus and Ridge Holland. 78-453, by the way. So they show Big E breaking his neck. Uh, let me take it back. They we really show... needed to see that again at yeah, WrestleMania. That was yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was a good time. Good time. They show, and, and we need to clarify. I mean, everyone knows this, but listen, there's broken necks and there's broken necks. This is almost as bad as a broken neck could be. Big E legit nearly died. So the New Day comes out in their Big E tribute gear to gain revenge for their fallen foe, and Ridge Holland beats their asses and pins them with his move in two minutes. Yeah. Hell of a feel-good moment that was. <laughs> you know, yesterday when uh, everybody was talking about the uh, match being moved to today... It was not official. And, uh, 
you know, they, they pretty much told them, you know, you're going to be on the show tomorrow. But uh, I don't think everybody really believed it. And the other day, I don't know if it was better or worse that they actually oh, were on the show. It's significantly Probably worse, worse. for the new day they were on the show. Yeah, and, Being uh, on Mania was the worst thing that happened to them this week. I mean, this, the shitty thing, and of course everyone's like, well, you know one wanted to see the match. And it's like, bro, there was you know 11 minutes of videos before. There were 11 minutes of videos after. I didn't need to see any of these fucking videos. And these poor blokes on WrestleMania in front of whatever this fake number was, you know, they got two minutes, bullshit nothing match with a nothing finish. I was like, wow. But thank God I got to see that video for the 85th time of those fucking cheerleaders doing Bianca's entrance or whatever it was. That was a marching band. Don't forget they brought the uh, Hall of Famers back out for the second night in a row to the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah, Undertaker came out and waved again, just like he did the first night. <laughs> for all the people that bought tickets for night two but not night one. Got to make sure they can see the Undertaker. Yeah. This new haircut he's got, my goodness. It's something else. Woo. Is that in your future, Craig? I don't think so. <laughs> That's too bad. That's too bad. I, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not thinning or balding, so I don't have to make up a new hairstyle. Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory. <laughs> McAfee remains awesome. He's running wild, flying all over the place, stopping in the middle to call his own commentary like The Rock used to do. Goes up top, misses a senton, but when Theory goes up top, uh, McAfee is right there to, 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 to have the corner struggle, flip off, land on his feet, run pop back up, hit a big-ass superplex. People were jumping up and down for Pat McAfee's near fall. And so Theory goes for his finish, which is apparently called the A-Town Down. McAfee turns into a cradle for the win. Probably went seven or eight minutes, but it was a great seven or eight minutes, and the place absolutely explodes. I think it went longer than that. It maybe have. Yeah. I lost kind of lost track in this very, very long show. Uh, all I know is Pat McAfee is amazing, and this was a great match. Yeah, Michael Cole's going absolutely nuts because him and, and McAfee are like best friends. And uh, No, Michael was Cole like, was going nuts because nobody was screaming in his ear because Vince was sitting next to him. Well, there is that as well. But, I mean, did, did this guy not uh, – actually, they only went 940. How about that? Did this guy never see the match with Adam Cole? That's what I was saying. Like, of course they didn't. Bro! If he's your good friend, go back and watch his fucking match with Adam Cole on NXT. That match was fucking great. And nobody... Listen, I was impressed with McAfee that he did a great job. But I, I can't imagine how he was surprised. Like, his match with Cole was so good. It was way better than this match. But, I mean, he looked great. I, I cannot say that he was a better worker than Austin Theory. But, like, anybody who watched this match, I mean, he stood out way more than Austin Theory. Austin Theory was there. He was fine. He was the heel. But man, this uh, this McAfee was just great in this match, and then they had to make him a fucking geek. Yeah, he almost With got a over. Capital G. So, in the building, what happened next was a raving success, and I'm sure a lot of people watching at home liked it. I can't tell you how angry this next thing made me. Mm -hmm. McAfee is celebrating. Vincent Mann is out there with his latest pet project, Austin Theory, consulting him after his loss. McAfee starts to challenge Vince to a fight. Minutes pass. Vince finally accepts. 76-year-old Vince McMahon gets in the ring, removes his dress shirt, calls for referee. We have a match, an official match. Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. So... Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler was much longer than this, and so it was much worse. But minute for minute, you've never seen such shit as Pat McAfee versus Grandpa Vince. Oh, Lord. Who looks 700 years old here. <laughs> Dude, it was horrible, but like, as soon as Vince grabbed that football, I knew exactly where this was yeah. all going. Uh... And at that point, like, it was worthwhile because I knew what was coming, but... Vince's clotheslines and McAfee having to bump. And, like, uh, to cut to the chase, McAfee gets a football booted into him by Vince. <laughs> and he's pinned, okay? And there was, like, nothing that should have led to Pat McAfee getting pinned. No. It wasn't like 50 guys attacked him. It wasn't like he got hit with a taser. It wasn't like a mousetrap snapped him or whatever. 
It was just like he got in there and Vince larried him and gave him a couple of absolutely horrible moves. Vince kicked, held out his arm and McAfee ran into it and fell down. Yeah, Don't kicked, call it a lariat. He kicked a ball into his ribs and he fucking pinned him. And I thought, this poor guy. Like, I'm sure that Pat McAfee is like over the moon right now to be involved in this. But he looked like the absolute biggest geek ever losing to this guy. All to set up what was a great moment. And uh listen for a lot of reasons. Listen. But man, that's whoa, whoa, that's got to be like one of the worst matches ever in the history of ever. We'll, we'll cut to the chase to what happened after this, which is Austin came out stunned theory had one last beer and one last stunner with Vince and that's all great and wonderful and the place went absolutely crazy. I'm sure anyone's there who'll never ever 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 forget this as long as they live, but you know what? I bet it all would have been just as fun and just as memorable without this Vince McAfee thing. You could have had Vince in the ring and Austin comes out and do the same thing. It would have worked just as well. Oh, bro, minus five stars? Like, way more than that. I mean, I don't have a limit. That was minus, like, a thousand stars. It wow. was so horrible. But we should talk about what was good. The, the, the. And that is that when Steve Austin's music hit and he came down to the ring, he he talks to Vince. Vince, you know, points to Austin Theory. Austin Theory gets booted in the gut. And uh, The Rock, you know, he used to do the gimmick where, you know, who can take the best bump for the uh, Stone Cold Stunner? And so Rock would just, like, every time that he took a stunner, he'd do some absolutely fucking ridiculous bump. And everybody always likes to do the wackiest bumps for the stunner. Austin Theory took one of the <laughs> best stunner bumps I ever saw in my life. He took this stunner, and he's a young athletic guy. He fucking jumped in the air. I think he jumped higher than Montez Ford when he came off the top 18 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. He fucking jumped so high in the air. And he bumps, and he it was so fucking he, good. He jumps 19 feet in the air. <laughs> and I, I believe at the, at right at the, the, the zenith of his jump, where like he's essentially weightless, I believe right then he began to run in place. Yes. Yeah. Kicking it his was legs. so awesome. So then, you know, Vince is like, oh, no, I'm going to get it. And so, you know, he starts talking to, to Austin, and he goes, you know, let's have a beer for old time's sake. And Austin goes, oh, you want a beer? You know, way to a man is through his uh, liver. So uh, Austin starts, you know, signaling for beer. And Vince, of course, thinks he's off the hook. And it's it's the Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. Everybody on the fucking face of this earth knows exactly where this is going, except Wiley Coyote. And so they get their beers, and and I watched that match with McAfee. And even when Vince was 25 years younger, this motherfucker could not take a stunner. No. Nope. Ever. Ever. He never took one good stunner in his whole fucking life. And when you think about how many times Steve Austin gave him the stunner, it's like, you had, it should have been maybe one. No. Never. Not one time. So they toast, and then, uh, you know, Austin is going as slow as fucking possible. And he stands there, and he slowly raises his foot, and he does the lightest fucking boot on the planet. And all Vince has to do is just stand there and mm -hmm. bend over. But he can't. He has to, like, he did some fucking stupid-ass sell, which gets him off balance. Now he falls down. He falls then backwards. He stumbles back into the ropes. Austin's chasing him around the ring trying to Austin's stun him. Austin's running. He grabs him by the neck to lift him off the fucking ground. Vince can't get to his feet. Finally, Austin turns him around like literally like he's a dead body. And he gives him this fucking stunner. And Vince takes it sitting down. He didn't even go to his knees. He sat down and he fell down. And Steve Austin lost it. Like not in a furious way. He just fucking cracked. He starts laughing and he's laughing, and he gets up there on the ropes, and he's fucking practically crying. He's laughing so hard. Because this fucking guy, their last stunner ever, <laughs> fucked it up again for old time's sake. I died when I saw it. It was like, it would have been, I guess it probably would have been cool if Vince would have taken a good stunner. But this was actually way better. I mean, this is the way it had to be. This was fucking poetry. That's what this was. Vote God damn. So, you yeah. Know I go, Craig. Go. I was going to say, Pat McAfee almost got over. He <laughs> almost got over. But no, Vince had to come in. Are you kidding me? This guy looked like Kermit the Frog on steroids. His eyes bugged out of his head. He actually does. My <laughs> Children, goodness. Please. Why? 
why did he have to come in? And then <laughs> Stone Cold boots him. He takes a knee. I don't know why. Because he didn't mean to. Guys, and, uh, nothing he, Vince did was on purpose. He's he that took, bad. <laughs> he took a knee. Do people Stone forget? Stone Cold had to pick him back up. Do people and then forget he fell again? how horrible Vince was at this? 30 years ago, 25, 30 years ago. When he was only middle-aged. Yes, he was now horrible he's then. Old. He couldn't take bumps. He couldn't run the ropes. He couldn't do anything back then. And now he's going to come out here at 76 and do it? No! This is a guy that will scream at Michael Cole over the headset for saying something wrong. And this guy screws everything up. So he takes this boot and he's stumbling backwards the ropes and back and Austin did more running here trying to hit the stunner than he did the entire match with Kevin Owens on night one but eventually he hit the stunner and for those of you on podcast I am making the quotation gesture with my fingers mm -hmm. and Vince goes down the place goes crazy Austin has a hearty laugh Austin and McAfee share a beer and then of course Austin sends McAfee as well McAfee does a much better sell than Vince did because he had just taken a sip of beer <laughs> It, he took a great bump. It, it was a combination of Triple H's entrance and Kurt Angle's stunner bump. Okay. Because he takes the stunner, sprays the beer up in the air, and then his teeter straight back like a tree. And then uh, in the aftermath, as Austin is still celebrating, the music's playing, everyone's going crazy, there's a shot of uh, McAfee trying to recuperate by, by chugging a beer on his back. <laughs> I laughed. McAfee's awesome. Yeah. This was entertaining. But and, my uh, God. I, I have not heard it, but I just watched uh, Dewey Foley recorded his father, Mick, reacting to the worst stunner of all time. It's <laughs> jolly old St. Mick laughing till he cries. So uh, that's out there. Sweet. So this show, I, I'm like, this show has been, uh, my, night, night two alone has been at least eight hours long by this point. I'm just exhausted. And it's time for Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. I wasn't exhausted no more. I did, no joke, as Roman is in the ring, his music's playing, his awesome new uh, operatic music is playing, he's staring at the camera on me, there's a close-up on his face, I got the uh, uh, notice from the cable box, are you still there? <laughs> because the show's so damn long! So, Paul Heyman does Roman Reigns' entrance, and it's every, and I love Paul, I'm, I have, I, there's no bigger fan of Paul Heyman as an on-screen character than myself, and he was on fire tonight. But he does Roman Reigns' whole entrance, the, 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 the undisputed, re reigning, defending, wh whichever championship he has. And he finishes, and they give the mat mic back to the regular ring announcer, but then Brock takes it away. And they put Paul Heyman with Brock Lesnar for the first time 20 years ago, specifically because Brock wasn't very good at talking, and Paul Heyman was. Well, Brock's been paying attention. <laughs> Brock's been learning and working at this. And he did his own ring intro. It's a Paul Heyman imitation, and it's gold! Actually, you know what's ironic about that, since you don't watch Raw and SmackDown? Brock did this on Raw Monday. And when it was over, he goes, That sucked. I'm never going to do that again. And then here we are, six days later, he repeated it. Well, this didn't suck. Yeah, well, he had the fans helping along this time. And he declared himself the cowboy country ass kicker who's going to kick your ass. <laughs> Barack <laughs> Lesnar. And they cut to Roman and Heyman. And Heyman is so butthurt at this imitation of himself. <laughs> we were friends for two decades, and now this man's making fun of me. You couldn't believe it. So the match begins, and this very much felt like... It felt like, as advertised, it was the biggest match in WrestleMania history, whatever they called the stupendous title of this damn thing. It's, it felt like a heavyweight championship match, and a special one at that. So... I'm pretty sure. No one corrected me on this. I think this is only the third time ever two guys have had three matches at WrestleMania. It has to be. Hunter and Taker did it. Austin and Rock did it. And Brock and Roman now have done it. And the first one was 2015 at WrestleMania in San Francisco, where Suplex City was born. And people on Twitter were arguing with me. No, it was born when the Cena match, when he hit a bunch of suplexes. No. In the WrestleMania match against Roman Reigns in San Francisco, Brock Lesnar declared, Suplex City, bitch! Yeah, and that's where Suplex City was born. Here we are, seven years later. We finally reached the end of our tale, and the match was just a slugfest. They just hit each other with everything they had. If it didn't work, they tried it again. Spears and F fives and Superman punches and suplexes and spears to the barricade, and uh, the, the the ref gets uh, ref gets taken out. Roman hits a low blow and a belt shot, but 
Brock kicks out of that. So Roman tries a spear again, and Brock catches him in a Kimura, and Brock's eyes in this Kimura. This 300-pound man was about 150 pounds per eyeball. They were bugging out of his head so far. Roman gets the ropes. So Brock has to break the hold. But Roman is still down, clutching his shoulder, pleading with Heyman. Paul, it's out. My shoulder's out. My shoulder's out. Heyman's pleading back, literally pleading back with him. My tribal chief, I beg of you, keep going. And he gets back up, and Brock goes to the F5, but Roman slips behind and hits one last spear. And after all this time, all these years, he got his big win over Brock Lesnar, cleans the sheet, escaped the other guy's move, hit his own move, and pinned him. This was a main event of the biggest show of the year. Yeah, it was exactly what I expected. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, it's exactly how they do all of these Roman Brock matches. Just start out with a bunch of suplexes. And it's just one big move, big move, big move, big move. This is not like the AJ Edge match where there's like an extended heat segment. It was just big move, no. reversal, it was not big like move, Edge reversal. In any way. Kick out of a finish, kick out of a finish. Kamura the guy, he manages to get the ropes, go for the finish, reverse the finish, hit the finish, pin. Uh, some people really didn't like the match, but I thought it was a. That was a very good WrestleMania main event style match. If you've seen the match a thousand times, you don't want to see it again. Like I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but I I thought it was good. I thought it was a good WrestleMania main event. It did feel epic. It was not the biggest WrestleMania match of all time by any stretch of the imagination, but you know they they delivered what you would want. And uh, there you go. I, I like this match. I really don't know what people were expecting. You weren't you weren't going to get a million different moves. You weren't going to get high spots. This was just two big dudes clubbering each other, and it was exactly what it should have been. What do you think, Mark? During this match, this was like probably the fiftieth time this weekend that we saw a guy get punched in the dick. And I said to Brian, "Why don't they just wear cups?" And then you know you get punched in the dick, and it'll still hurt, but like you won't hurt as much. And Brian said, "If you get punched in the dick with a cup on, it'll cut your dick off." That's what he told me. Hey, I just watched Jackass. Cups are not foolproof. <laughs> exactly, Vinny. Right? But I don't think you're gonna get your dick cut off, Brian. See, this was what I learned when I was in school. Was, Somebody uh, told you that a cup is going to cut yeah, your dick the, off. Yeah, the the cup goes goes over everything. Yeah, and so if you if you if you kick the cup up at just the right angle, it's going to cut your dick off, hey, bro. That's spoken what that's like what I was man. told. <laughs> spoken like a man who never actually played sports. No, spoken <laughs> like a man who never wore a cup. Are you? I never about, wore a cup in my life. You, I didn't wear a cup wrestling. I didn't wear a cup doing jujitsu. I never wore a cup. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and I, I never. No one ever got me in the balls. Because I avoided it. Oh. Yes. Because you're stealthy. Exactly. Anyway, exactly. the match is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was fucking it Brock was Lesnar. Fine. It was the all same right. old match that I've seen fucking all these times before. And they're like, oh, it's the biggest match of the fucking century or whatever the fuck they were selling as. And I'm like, bro, like, we have seen this match. It is going to be suplexes. Here's the German. There's the German. Here's the German. Then we're going to get some spears, and he's going to have his little glove. His glove matched his shoes and matched his underpants, if you didn't yes, notice. Yes, it's WrestleMania. Is, match that shit. He matched his mm. underpants to his glove and Probably shoes. Probably matched his cup. So, yeah, you know, but yeah, I've seen that match. It'll be interesting to see what they do with. Uh, yeah, we've seen that match three times in WrestleMania, but we've also had you know backlashes. Many, I'm sure. I've Summer seen Saudi, that match. Saudi Sir. shows. Sir. Saudi. Sir. Yeah. I've seen that match. Sir. Yes. So Sir. that is w w one question coming out of this weekend: is who is Roman's next challenger? I don't McIntyre. have any idea. Awesome theory. Drew McIntyre. I guess, McIntyre. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vince. God. Edge. Uh, could, no, they're both heel. The Edge Lords. Yeah, the Edge, edge Lords. Lord against the Bloodline. Yeah, I mean he can. Edge. I mean theoretically, well, he should be able to team. work both shows now, right? He's, he's a dual champion. Team. Sure. He can't just be on SmackDown. But is he going to have both belts for like until next WrestleMania? Bro, everybody's listen, he's got two belts. They Bro. have been planning this match for months now. Okay. So, they have? so Paul, yeah, Paul uh, introduces. But they've already had this match. Why would they need to plan it? Paul introduces Roman as the undisputed. Uh huh. WWE Universal Champion. That's mm -hmm. how he introduced him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he wins, and uh, one of the announcers goes, "He's the new undisputed Universal Champion." Yep. And I was like, "He was already the fucking Universal Champion. You're literally calling him what he was called in the ring introductions." 
And then uh, somebody else was like, uh, you know, he's the uh, WWE Universal Champion. And I'm like, that. you called him that also when he was... So it's like, you had all this time to figure out what you're going to call the guy who wins both belts, and you fucking call him the same thing he's been called? I thought they'd have, like, a new belt. They'd have a new name. No, they just stumbled through calling him the same thing, and now he holds both of the belts. So Through their own Twitter here. Oh, they got an answer now? Well, you're not going to like it. At WWE, (laughs) the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns has finally defeated Brock Lesnar on the grandest stage of them all Uh to become the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Wow. So I guess it's both. It's WWE and Universal. Maybe that's a unification. How about just World Champ? Why what's bigger so than a, what's bigger than a universe? Nothing, yeah. dude. You got a, a multiverse. A, ah, yes. he is the multiverse champion. The Thank multiversal you, Vinny. Multiversal champion. Yeah, there we go. Now we got it. Wow. As soon as he fights somebody on Mars, he can be the. This is dumb. Just calling the world champion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this <laughs> is super dumb. We're everyone. Uh, everyone, we're, everyone, go to WWE's Twitter. They have a picture of Brock putting Roman in the Kimura and Brock's eyes are <laughs> they're universal. I'm gonna retweet this right now. It's Brock's. It's Brock's awesome. Brock is the, this is the best Brock there's ever been. Is is this recent? Cowboy. It is amazing. It, 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 I, I baby face cowboy. Yeah, I don't want to say that it took two decades to get here because he's been great the whole time. But yes, it's the best Brock. This ever. is the greatest. Yes. Yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap it up, everybody. Hey, Mark, you want to get some plugs?